For centuries, we have walked these paths. We walked to richer fields, to better grazing, to a new village just over that ride. We walked, and the paths became roads, and the roads brought us together and took us farther. But change is slow. Still, we walk. The villages grow. The centers of trade become more colorful and offer more to the senses. The colors brighten. The taste sweeten. And suddenly, we are growing. Progress, some call it. From foot and horse to carriage, the old ways are strong. The new ways are suspect. We are told that somewhere in the world, there are strange machines which can do more quickly and more thoroughly what our oxen have done far back into memory. And indeed, there is much to be believed in what we are told. Because just out there, rising before our eyes, are sights and sounds so large, so loud. A villager can stretch his imagination when he is told of them and still not conceive the whole. Here, there, in only a few places as yet, our country, our Ethiopia, is walking into the future. marvelous sights and sounds draw us. They offer the promise of a life we have never known. The city will teach our children the ways of progress. They will learn to build the machines to right the wrongs. Our young people, they are Ethiopia's future. For many, the future comes too late. Some of our people have lived with nothing for as long as we can remember. And even here, in the great city, some will live no other way. The emperor is a good man. He builds our roads. He builds our cities. He has brought us many wonderful things from many distant nations. He is making us a great nation. It is said the emperor brings his spiritual belief from Europe. It is said that he is a Christian in the European sense. Actually, Ethiopians have always been Christian in the Ethiopian sense. The Coptic Church is said to date back to the famous Ethiopian eunuch of the New Testament. The church's festivals and ceremonies are solemn and significant and few dare question the church's authority. During Timkat, the celebration of the baptism of Jesus Christ, holy men gather from far and near, bringing their arcs and parasols. A pool is set apart, 
blessed, and its waters are sprinkled over the thousands of worshippers who gather for this most beloved feast. For three days, we eat, drink, dance, and renew our Christian vows. This is our land, the old and the new. We are alive and excited. We are beginning our future. This is the land the missionaries found. Why did they come? They came to build a church in the land of Ethiopia, in the hearts of Ethiopia. And they too learned to walk from house to house, group to group, person to person, extending the invitation to come and learn of the true God and his love for you. started quietly, minutely, just the missionaries, a few interested people, and the word of God. Questions were asked by those who dared. Problems were discussed. And as times like this pass, spirit of the God who is alive found those who were seeking them. And then, building on that small initial interest, the missionary and his few began the slow task of interesting others. The barriers were subtle, but strong. We are a friendly people, but the spiritual slumber of centuries is difficult to awaken. We listened, we smiled, and we continued our lives untouched. Oh, there were a few, but as it is evident that God's people should be witnessing for Christ, it is also true that the church should be his people, his people teaching God's word, touching lives for Christ. And as those lives are touched and the small group grows, larger meeting places must be found. A rented schoolroom is the next step and the missionary is still in the position of leadership. The witness. The meetings create confidence in the missionary and what he has to say. And before long, more seekers are met by the love of God and give themselves to him. Quietly, early in the morning before many are stirring, a secluded baptism takes place. If the local Coptic priests were to find out, there would be much persecution. This ceremony is in sharp contrast to the noise of Timkat, but to those who come to watch, this seems somehow more like the baptism of Christ with whom these new believers identify. <laughs> Our group is now ten, and the church is beginning to form. But to build a church, you must have organization. Duties must be assigned, elders appointed. And so meetings of business must take place, where leaders, tasks, and collective behavior is decided upon. This new group meeting in the schoolroom is becoming the object of much curiosity. There are those there who have been known to be, shall we say, of questionable character in the past. And yet now, they seem strangely changed. And too, it is now one of us who brings the words before the group. 
What is this power that can change men's behavior and make a man a teacher? And look, is that not the man who was in the water that morning? And now he is trusted to collect money. Money? Why money? Yes, money, because to build a church, you must have money. Ah, I see. Just as the missionary must give the speaking over to one of us, so must we support our own church. That way, it is our church. God is our God. Then we will support it, and we will build. Jesus Christ is his followers, wherever they are. And where this church truly exists, you must have action. The true church of Jesus Christ hears her master's plea and acts on it. This church began to act and soon sent its own missionary. for lost sheep in Ethiopia. The missionary must often travel many miles. Villages are far apart and roads are few. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. My flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none did search or seek after them. And so the good news is carried, is walked to the shepherdless sheep on every hill. And the building of the Church of Jesus Christ continues as the job is passed from missionary to missionary to missionary. But again, I repeat, the building is not the church. The church is the people, the people witnessing for Christ, seeking others for Christ. they gathered here? They have been called lepers, unclean. Days past, they have been stoned, sent away, left to die. Perhaps no sheep alive are more aware of the fact that they are lost, that this life is hopeless.
But Jesus Christ calls no man hopeless. To those who would build his church, he offers hope. Hope in the form of immediate medical help. Hope in friendship, in care. The awful disease can be stopped. Hope for those who walk on feet they cannot feel. and the first step toward a new life. The missionary and his skills are greatly respected. But when classes in reading and Bible study are offered to those who must remain for treatment, they are eagerly attended. Here is someone who can help our poor body does it not make sense that he can also help our soul? I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring and they shall hear my voice and there shall be one fold at one shepherd. Sometimes the bleat of a lost sheep is the cry of pain. Five days. Five days it has been, and still the baby does not come. The dresser from the mission clinic has been trained to make preliminary examinations. She must be brought to the clinic immediately. She is so far she cannot walk. She must be brought to the clinic. She is in great danger. No, it is the girl's mother who speaks. The Kalu, the witch doctor, has said that all will be well if a sacrifice is made. The girl's father is fetching a lamb. But the lamb will not help. She needs care. The clinic. No, a sacrifice as the Kalu has said. Please do not spend time on this meaningless sacrifice. The girl is close to death. We will sacrifice. The Kalu knows best. as a last resort, perhaps just to rid themselves of a pitiful noise. When morning comes and she is no better, the decision is made to carry her to the mission clinic. She cannot live, the Kalu has said. He can do no more. We will go to watch. And when she dies, 
we will know the wisdom of the Kalu. And so, with the mission dresser in front and the girl's mother and father a little behind, the somber procession makes the long walk to the mission clinic. Inside the clinic, the attitude is quick, sure, and friendly. Five days of pain have left the girl hopeless. Outside, a crowd waits to hear that she is dead. The baby, it is here, and they are both happy and alive. In the days that followed, the new mother gained in strength and insight. She had known a week of hopelessness and pain. None of the old ways had helped her escape. And then, suddenly, she was made free. And as the freedom of Jesus Christ was told her, it seemed to complete her experience. She came to die and found one who had died for her. She came to die and instead, she was born anew. Two new lives were going back to her village. The building of the Church of Jesus Christ goes on. This then is why the missionary came. Not merely to heal body or educate the illiterate or erase superstition or enrich the poor but to build a church. We thank them for coming. They have helped us so much because of the message they brought. We too are now the sons of God. But there are many who have not heard this wonderful gospel even once. So we need their help a while longer until a stronger and larger body has grown. Won't you also help to build the Church of Jesus Christ in Ethiopia? Mm -hmm.